After escaping Zuko, Sokka, Katara, and Aang make their way to the Southern Air Temple. In this episode, we get two separate stories occurring over the same period of time. Quite different from the last two episodes we've seen already, where both stories collided with one another in a climactic heat near the end. Here we have Aang's story with Sokka and Katara, and Zuko's story with his uncle and Commander Zhao. Firstly, I think this is the only episode to not have the classic white background behind the title. It seems they went for this design change, but decided against it for the rest of the series. I quite like it, and I kind of wish they would have implemented this for the later episodes. And also, I must say, the music in this show is phenomenal. Right off the bat, we get some beautiful background music as the gang is waking up in the morning. The music fits each scene so well, Wake and up, I love Saga. it. This episode starts with Aang very excited to go to the Southern Air Temple. Now his excitement is warranted, but I have to say, Katara has a point. She warns him about what he could see, about being gone for 100 years, and about the war. But just as in the previous episode, Aang is skeptical about the war's consequences. Then we get a shot of Zuko and Iroh, arriving at a Fire Nation port to fix their ship. Zuko is adamant on making sure no one knows they found the Avatar and he wants to get back on sea as fast as possible. But then Commander Zhao arrives, and again we are greeted with music that complements the scene so well, giving Zhao a menacing demeanor. Commander now. After watching this episode, I realized that not much progress is made in the wider story, but the progress is made in the development of the characters. We get to see a new side of Aang and Zuko that we did not see in the previous two episodes, really setting up the rest of the series. And again, over here, with the music. There it is. The Southern Air Temple. The show just knows how to put you in the right mood, in the right situation. Now I have to say, the next part is pretty sad. Katara is explaining to Aang that his culture could be dead. But Aang refuses to believe her. He is just so happy to be home. And I think anyone would be. But Aang doesn't realize the kind of damage that has been done. As I said, the episode crisscrosses between these two stories, and I feel that just as one story gets good, they move over to the other, which gives a bit of a balance to the story, but I wish they extended out the stories a little more for each person. I believe that Zuko's story here is about overcoming self-doubt, whereas Aang's story is one of acceptance and moving on. For Aang, the episode wants to show us that we can move on and keep going with our lives, despite the tragedies that occur. One quote really gets to me from the middle of the episode. Sokka says to Katara, you can't protect him forever. I think this shows just how much of a child Aang is in this first episode. He doesn't really know how to be on his own, let alone being the Avatar. And this is why it hurts him so much when he sees Monkey Yatsu dead. He clearly had a very good relationship with him and the other monks. And so to see everyone gone, must hurt immensely. The end of the episode here where Katara is comforting Aang really shows us what I was saying before, that we can move on and keep going with our lives even though those around us may be gone. Now the middle part of this episode is nice and cool how Aang sees the other avatars and makes Momo as a new friend but I want to focus on Zuko's story now. I believe this story is focusing on Zuko realizing who he is, partly. He's not changing sides or anything, but he's realizing that he's more powerful than he thinks he is, and more powerful than others think of him. The Agni Kai at the end is symbolic of this. Power not just in rage and strength, but mental power as well. He doesn't hurt Zhao at the end of the episode, but he lets him go. Now this takes mental strength. And I think this is what Zuko learned in this episode, is that he is stronger physically and mentally than he thought before. In the end, both of our characters learn something in this episode, and this truly sets up the rest of the series. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this Avatar episode. I will be doing more of these, but less frequently. Let me know your thoughts and feedback down below, and until next time.